tires, wheels. Where would motorcycling be without them? They've come a long way in the last decade or so. They keep the motorcycle gripping the road, and they're subjected to all sorts of road and weather conditions. So to keep your Harley Davidson performing like it should, the tires and wheels must be maintained and serviced on a regular basis. Proper service may help prevent this from happening to you or your customer. Harley Davidson Motor Company proudly presents this PhD service training program. This program is designed to help you provide better service to your customers while you increase your service proficiency, professionalism, and profitability. In this program, we'll examine the tires and rims of most Harley-Davidson models. You'll learn about rim profiles and how they affect tire selection. We'll show you how to inspect wheels and rims and how to select valve stems or tubes to match the wheel. You'll discover how air pressure can affect tire wear and performance. And learn to interpret the various markings on sidewalls. In addition, we'll take a closer look at special tire service tools, including tire mounting and balancing equipment. It's all geared toward making your service department more productive and professional. In a future PhD program, we'll discuss other wheel-related information, such as hubs, wheel bearings, spokes, wheel lacing, and truing. Over the years, Harley-Davidson has used a number of different wheel and rim combinations to meet the various demands of the motorcycle rider. Let's look at some examples. The aluminum alloy cast wheel has been used with both tube and tubeless type tires. It's still in production in the tubeless configuration. The disc type wheel has been manufactured in two ways, either assembled as two halves, then bolted and riveted together, or cast as one piece. This one piece disc wheel is in production today. Then there is the steel alloy rim with its perfect chrome finish. It's used on the laced wheel models. And finally, the extruded aluminum rim. This style of rim was used on 18 and 19 inch spoke wheels on both XL and FX models until 1979. Now that you're familiar with the various materials and styles, let's look at the specifics. You may have heard the term rim profile before but weren't sure what it was. Simply put, it's the configuration or shape of the inside of the rim. It is a very important feature and you need to be fully aware of what it does. This raised portion or the bead retention hump helps keep the tire on the rim in case of a flat. Over the last quarter century, Harley Davidson has used a number of rim profiles. The 3D rim profile has been used on laced wheels since the mid-60s and on 16-inch cast wheels since the mid-70s. The TL rim profile was renamed by the Tire and Wheel Association to MT around 1985. It was a name change only. This profile is used on 19-inch cast wheels and some 16-inch cast wheels. Next is the TLA rim profile. It is used on 19 and 21 inch laced wheels. And finally, the CM rim profile. It is no longer in production, but was used on 18 and 19 inch laced wheels. On XL models through 1978 and on FX models through 1979. The different profiles are generally marked on the rim along with the width and diameter stamping. When dealing with a cast wheel, you must be aware of its tire type designation, meaning tube type or tubeless. Not all cast wheels are certified for tubeless use. Make sure 
that the tubeless designation is present on the cast wheel before you mount a tubeless tire. If you mount a tubeless type tire on a wheel not labeled for tubeless tires, the air could leak through the casting. Then you'll probably be faced with one of these. Before you start any service work, you need to visually inspect the rim. Look for bent rims. This rim is damaged and should be replaced. Do not attempt to straighten or hammer it out because there may be additional damage that you can't see. The same is true for cast wheels. If the rim area is dented, bent, cracked, or damaged, it should be replaced, not repaired. While inspecting a cast wheel, you also need to look at the spokes. Check for cracks or fractures, especially at the rim and hub areas. When in doubt, replace it. Remember, we'll concentrate on laced wheels in an upcoming PhD program. Damaged wheels could cause a handling problem. Vibration, loss of inflation pressure, and bead unseating all of which are dangerous situations. So when a customer asks you for a replacement tire for his motorcycle, check the rim profile first. Don't assume the wheels are stock. You need to be sure, because fitting a rim with an incompatible tire could be dangerous. For the most accurate information, always refer to the latest service literature listing the rim profiles. Suggest to the customer that service be performed at the dealership. This will ensure that a qualified technician will also inspect the wheel for any damage that may be present. Have you ever wondered how tires are chosen for Harley-Davidson motorcycles? Well, months of testing and thousands of miles lead to this important decision. The tires are subjected to all types of riding conditions. Harley-Davidson engineers look for stability, traction, and durability. They consider the overall performance of the tire. Harley-Davidson works closely with the tire manufacturer to obtain the best possible tire design. The recommended tires have been tested. The rest is up to you. You can help make sure that your customers receive the top performance designed into each tire. For everyone's benefit, there are several specifications on the sidewall. This information is your guide to the best tire performance. Never exceed the load ratings on the tire. The ratings have been set for the rider's protection. Remember, when determining the load of the motorcycle, you need to include the weight of the driver, passenger, luggage, and any accessories that have been added. Low tire pressures will adversely affect the load capacity and performance of the tire. We'll have more on tire pressures later in this program. These letter designations signify the miles per hour rating given to the tire. Harley-Davidson has used all of these over the years. Ratings can be found on the sidewall as part of the tire size designation. So now we've sorted through the information on the tires, but how do you know which tire to use? It's simple. Use only factory authorized tires. Just refer to the latest service literature. Hi. Because of the potential hazards, don't be tempted to use a non-recommended tire on a customer's motorcycle. Consider these points. Non-stock tires could adversely affect the handling of the motorcycle. Is the tire width right for the rim width? If not, the bead could unseat and the tire could come off. Have you compared the tire width to its height? This is the aspect ratio which could affect the clearance to the fender, swing arm, or fasteners. Will it contact anything? There are many considerations in choosing a tire. The reasons are clear. The final decision is up to you. When changing only one tire, you must consider the remaining tire to make sure that the new tire is compatible with the remaining tire. Also, when fitting a new tire, you must be aware of the condition of the other tire. Are the tread depths and styles so different that handling could be affected? Whenever possible, change tires in pairs. 
and always tell the customer what you found. So just what's involved in servicing the tire and related parts? Inner tubes are a critical part of the tire and wheel assembly and should be treated with care. It's best to replace the tube whenever a tube type tire is installed on a tube type rim. The tube can become stretched or thin. It may have folds in it or just plain get old. It's a good idea and more cost effective to replace it rather than patch it. Various inner tubes have been used over the years. Some with a center valve stem and others with an offset valve stem. These combinations were used with both rubber and metal valve stems. The lengths vary for required clearances. And always match the tube size to the tire size. When dealing with tube type tires, you can't overlook rim bands. Before you consider reusing the rim band, you need to be aware of the following. Rust particles embedded in the band could puncture the new tube. A hole caused by a spoke may tear all the way across. Or a tear could result from chafing or folding. The rim band may no longer have any elasticity. Does it return to its original shape or stay stretched out? Any of these conditions could render the rim band useless. Rim bands are inexpensive when compared to the cost of the tire, inner tube, and installation. When in doubt, replace it very carefully. The spoke nipples should be covered completely. Make sure the rim band doesn't shift when you install the tube or tire. The same holds true for tubeless tire valve stems. The wheel core hole determines the valve stem diameter. Stem length is determined by brake caliper clearances. It is a good idea to replace the entire valve stem assembly whenever a tire is replaced. Just refer to the current parts catalog to ensure proper stem selection. When considering tire repairs, such as plugging, follow the tire manufacturer's service recommendations. An instruction sheet on authorized repair techniques is included with this PhD training program. This supplements the instructions received with each repair kit. Kent Moore has many tire service tools available, like the tire repair kit, which contains the necessary equipment to repair a tire. The tire spreader holds the tire apart. This makes the repair easier and faster. There are many tire mounting machines and techniques that are in use today, and some are more efficient than others. Efficiency is one of the keys to a successful service department. In the customer's mind, the tools and equipment used reflect the quality of work being performed. The right equipment promotes greater productivity and profits, and the professional environment of a successful service department builds customer confidence. Remember, tire mounting requires attention to certain details. A paint dot or marking on the tire sidewall usually indicates the lightest spot on the tire. This mark should be placed at the valve stem during installation. Tires that have directional arrows must be installed correctly for these reasons. Have you ever wondered about the tire tread? The tread design can be a major factor in tire traction. Therefore, the tread must travel in the correct direction to be effective. And tires must travel in the proper direction because of the different loads they encounter. For example, the rear tire is specifically constructed to take the weight and force of acceleration. And the front tire must endure the increased loads of braking. Kent Moore has tools available to help you mount your replacement tires. The rim protectors, part number HD01289, helps prevent scratching the wheel during mounting. And the bead expander, part number HD28700, assists in seating the tire bead. When inflating the tire, 
never exceed the recommended maximum pressure when seating the bead. Tire pressure is extremely important on a motorcycle. It's probably the easiest service to perform and can be the most neglected. Remember your valve cap. It provides a second line of defense against air loss through the valve. If the air pressure is too low, it will wear the shoulders of the tire. Plus, it will overstress the tire carcass, causing increased heat buildup and possible tire failure. Low air pressures can even cause rim damage by not allowing the tire to absorb road bumps or potholes. If the air pressure is constantly too high, you will get center tread wear. This will also give you a hard ride. And never exceed the pressure marked on the tire sidewall. Improper tire pressure could lead to premature tire wear and unnecessary expense. More importantly, improper tire pressure could cause vehicle handling problems, tire failure, or injury. Always refer to the latest service literature for proper tire pressures. It's a good idea that you Remind the, the customer to check tire pressures weekly. The pressure should be checked while the tire is cold using a good quality gauge. Proper balancing is essential for even tire wear, good vehicle handling, and vibration control. Consider checking the tire balance at 5,000 mile intervals. Various equipment is available. Static or bubble balancing was one of the first methods used. It does a good job, but there are now more accurate ways of balancing. Dynamic or spin balancing is considered the most reliable means of balancing a tire. It can be performed at various speeds to accurately simulate road speeds. Harley Davidson has used three types of wheel weights. The stick-on for cast wheels, the crimp-on for laced wheels, and the clamp-on type that attaches to the wheel rim. If a customer tells you of a vibration that came on suddenly, you may consider this. A tube-type cast wheel can give you an internal flat. The tube may have gone flat, but some air pressure is still being held inside the tire and wheel. Simply loosen the valve stem nut and push down on it. If air comes out, you've identified your vibration. Harley-Davidson does not recommend the use of liquid tire balancers or sealers. Such products may hide damage to the wheel and tire, which could result in a sudden loss of air, causing an accident. It also makes the tire difficult to service. When is a tire considered worn out? The recommended minimum tread depth by most tire manufacturers is 1 16th of an inch. A method of measuring this is by using a tire depth gauge. Another way of gauging tread depth is by looking at the tread wear indicator bars. For illustration purposes, we have painted these blue. The bars are 1 32nd of an inch tall and are located within the tread. They become more noticeable as the tire wears and are found on all highway motorcycle tires. Each state has its own minimum tread depth. Consult your local law enforcement agency. Earlier, we indicated how air pressure affects tire wear. Mechanical causes can also contribute to premature tire wear. One-sided tire wear can be found on motorcycles with side cars that have too much camber. In other words, too much lean. The tire does not wear evenly across the tread. Tire feathering can also be found on sidecar rigs that have too much toe-in on the sidecar wheel. Vehicle misalignment also contributes to uneven tire wear. Refer to PhD program number 104 for alignment procedures. And again, improper tire balance can lead to poor tire wear, such as cupping, The way you store your tires has a lot to do with how long they'll last. Keep your tires away from ozone sources such as electric motors and heat sources 
like hot water pipes or a furnace. The ozone or extreme heat will accelerate the natural aging process of the tire. The sun will promote aging, hardening, and deterioration of tires. Keep them out of the sun whenever possible. Keep all gasoline, oils, and harsh solvents away from tires. These could cause the rubber to break down, making the tires unusable. During this program, we've discussed how to properly service and maintain the tires and rims of Harley-Davidson motorcycles. Now, let's review the important points. Please come to the to service begin desk. with, you need to be to aware... Time really flies when you're having fun. Lunch is over already. Time to get back to work. Hi, I'm Steve. What can I do for you? Hi, I'm Tom. I've never been here before, but from what I've heard, you guys do top-notch service work. We appreciate the compliment. I'm sure you won't be disappointed. Good, good. Well, the reason I'm here is to get a new tire for my lowrider. I've got it parked just outside. Okay. Um, can you help me out? A new tire for a lowrider. Hmm. Okay, the first thing that I'll do is check out the rim profiles. Let's see. He could have the 3D used on both cast and laced 16-inch wheels. The TL or MT is used on 16 and 19-inch cast wheels. Huh. I wonder if he's got the TLA. It's used on 19 and 21-inch laced wheels. And the last one is the CM profile. And if he's got that one, the rims will have to be changed because they're obsolete and factory-recommended tires aren't available. And if it's got cast wheels, I'll check to see if it's a tube type or a tubeless rated wheel. Then I've got to make sure the tires match. Is the remaining tire still usable and compatible with the new tire? When the tire is off, I'll look at the rim to make sure it's not damaged. After that, I'll determine the right valve stem or tube and rim band. I'll check the latest service literature and use the tire that the factory recommends. After I pull the right tire, I'll look at the markings on the sidewall, point the arrow in the right direction, make sure that the dot is at the valve stem, and caution him against exceeding the load limits or the speed rating. Then I'll begin to mount the tire following all safety procedures. If I run into any problems, I've got all the Kent Moore special tools for tire servicing. I'll do a spin balance and then, before I reinstall the wheel, I should inspect the bearings, seals, and brake pads for possible service sales. And I'll make sure that he knows why it's so important to maintain the tire pressure on his bike. Then I'll... Hey, yo, Steve! What? Oh, sorry. I was thinking about your tire. So can you help me out or what? I'm sure I can, Tom. And we can probably get started on it right away. Let's take a closer look at your bike. All right, then. Let's do it. You know, there's a lot more to tires and rims than meets the eye. This Ph.D. service training program was designed to help you provide better service to your customers while making your service operation more proficient, professional, and profitable. For additional training, attend the courses offered at the Harley-Davidson Technical Training Center. Call the service department for more information. This program was produced by the Harley-Davidson Service and Technical Communications Departments.